I am a fan of stitch number 16 for an overlock stitch on the Foff Ambition 610 sewing machine. Now, if this information is not showing on your screen, touch the I to bring it up, and you're gonna notice that it recommends foot three. That is the one with the guide on it. That little red marker is actually adjustable with the screw to set up perfectly for doing a couple things, blind hems, top stitching, and overlocking. You're going to notice that there is a small pin inside the foot and the stitch is going to stitch and then jump over that pin. And what it'll do is support the stitch so your fabric doesn't curl. Have you ever done a zigzag when you're trying to overlock some edges and that edge is no longer flat, it's kind of curled under? It's just because that zig is pulling on that edge and it kind of curls. Well, with a supporting part of the foot, that will not happen. But what you do need to do is adjust the red guide so that it is even with the pin. And then that way you have the perfect place to guide the edge of the fabric. All right, and I like to do it, I mean, you can do it on the foot, but or when the foot is on the machine, but it's easier to do it just by holding it, you can see it a little better. Okay, this is all set. Let's go ahead and attach it to the machine. Let's make sure that the IDT is engaged because this foot does have that particular cutout. I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can use this same exact stitch. So for example, right now, why do we overlock our fabrics? It's so these edges stop unraveling, especially once you start to put them in the wash, they're just gonna become a thread mess. So you need to have something to secure those edges. And oftentimes, if you don't have a serger or an overlock machine, this is the way to do it. So as this stitch is designed, it's gonna stitch along and then jump over over the edge, it's jumping over that little pin. Well, if I just keep the edge of the fabric running next to that little red marker, everything is going to be guided so that stitch is located perfectly right off the edge. You're gonna notice that that jump of the stitch goes right into air, which is where we want it to be. You're gonna notice how flat this is and how secure and professional looking it is. You can do it on a single edge or a single layer and go all the way around all your pieces before you sew them together. Or you could sew them together and then before you get everything finished, you could even do this across both edges. And that would be is if you didn't have to press open your seam. Sometimes inside of bags, uh, that makes more sense. Okay, so what else could we do with this stitch? One thing that I love to use it for is something like on knit fabric, maybe with a ribbing around the edge. And you're noticing that this this stitch has a straight stitch along the left side. So we're gonna allow this to be both a overcast stitch and a seam at the exact same time. We're using the stitch exactly how, how it was saved. We're folding our ribbing in half and lining up the raw edges all together with our cut edge and then sliding everything up against that marker that we're going to continue to follow. Make sure that that IDT is engaged and then that way as it, the fabric is stretchy anyway, that's gonna help keep everything looking nice and normal. So I'm really just keeping the edges kind of guiding right up against the little red marker. Yes, this does have a a forward and back feel to it, so just kind of do the best you can. First time's always a little tricky, but try it. You will find it's not as hard as it looks. Ribbing is usually stretched a little bit. It's usually cut smaller than the opening, so I am giving it a little gentle pull just to kind of give a simulation of how that's gonna look. That should give us a good idea. So here's what it looks like from the back side. Nice stretch and give, but look, it's all done. One seam and an overcast all in one pass.